Hello and welcome to this YouTube video on planning your literature search. It is essential before you start any search to ensure you have a clear answerable question, a plan of the key components of your search, and you've decided which databases you want to use. This will then help you to find relevant results by keeping your search focused and it will save you time. In the next section, we will take a look at PICO and SPIDER, which are methods used to help you planning your search. So let's first take a look at PICO, which is often used for quantitative research. Using this method, you will lay out the four key areas of your search. You may also find it useful to note down key terms and subject headings, including relevant abbreviations, synonyms and alternate spellings. This is because you can't guarantee which term an author will prefer to use in the literature and you want to make sure you find all the relevant results. So what does PICO stand for? You first have P for population. Very often this will be P for patient. Note here characteristics such as age, sex, condition and location. The intervention is the topic you are investigating, such as a new drug or procedure. C is what you are comparing it to, so please note there may not always be a comparison group depending on your topic. O is for outcome, which is what you are hoping to achieve, for example, lower readmission rates. So let's now take a look at an example with the following question. Can vitamin C be used to cure patients with sepsis? So we have here our example, PICO. For the population, we've noted patients with sepsis, and in brackets, I've put blood poisoning and the different spellings for septicemia as alternate terms I might want to search for. The age group are adults age 18 and over, and the setting and location is hospitalized patients from all countries. The intervention is patients being treated with vitamin C, and I've made a note as the ascorbic acid as an alternate for vitamin C. For the comparison, we've put a standard care, which is things like antibiotics and surgery. And then for the outcome, we want to know if it's an effective treatment and does it reduce the mortality rate? For qualitative research, you may prefer to use SPIDER. So for SPIDER, we have S for sample, which is who is being investigated and what is the sample size. PI stands for phenomenon of interest, which is what is being investigated. D is the design of the study, so which research method or framework is being used. E is for the evaluation type, so what outcomes are we investigating? And R is for research type, so is it qualitative, quantitative or mixed? So as an example, we have the following paper here, which we're going to put a spider together for. So this is from 2021, and it's Cancer Patients' Experiences of Realisation of Relatives' Participation in Hospital Care, a Qualitative Interview Study. So the spider for this paper would have been S, which is for sample, and 21 hospital patients with cancer. The PI would be relatives' participation in patient hospital care. The design is semi-structured interviews. The evaluation is patient experiences and the research design is qualitative. So once you have planned your search, it's now time to think about what databases you want to use. There's no minimum or maximum, but how many you choose will depend on your search. Here we'll provide a few examples of databases, but remember this is not an exhaustive list. So let's start with those that are available with a UHB Open Athens account. We first of all have Medline, which is a general medical database covering health and biomedicine from across the world. It also contain articles on life sciences where it's relevant to the medical profession. We secondly have Embase, which is another general medical database focusing on biomedicine and also includes literature on drugs and pharmacology. We have Synal Complete and MCare, which are databases designed to support nurses and allied health professionals. So outside of Yaffin's account, there are a number of databases which are free to access and also offer high quality evidence-based medical research. The top one is Cochrane Library, which is a database for systematic reviews and randomized control trials, both published and unpublished. We then have the NICE Evidence Search, which is a database for guidelines and policies from over 800 organizations across the world, covering healthcare, drugs, technology, and public health. 
It is also another way to source systematic reviews. We then also have PubMed, which is a free version of Medline and contains millions of citations and abstracts. Thank you very much for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. If you have any further questions on literature searching or would like to give us some feedback, please do contact your site library by email or by phone, or you can visit the library counter Monday to Friday, nine till five.